So now I'm going to put these uh, Tektro brake levers on. And all it is to do that is pull the lever back and you can see there's an Allen key in there and you just slacken and tighten that up wherever you want them on the bar. Now you do want these quite tight because you don't want them to, to move when you are um, obviously braking and leaning on them and stuff. Uh, the only reason I've got my grips is because that end is too short to get in there. And with that being a long short end there, I can't get enough leverage. So I'm just gonna, not going mental again. I'm only just using this just because I can't get the other end of the Allen key in. And again, just feel how, how tight it is. Perfect. So I'm just gonna do the other one. I'm gonna put on the bar end shifter and then I'll talk through, I'll get the bar and shifter on first and then I'll talk through how we uh, do the cables. So we've got these beautiful bar and shifters from Rivendell. Um, got a left and a right pair, but because we're going single speed, we only need the one. And all it is to fit them, just unscrew that bit there. Take that out and you just do an Allen key down that side. I think you do it opposite on these to pull those these in and then those pull it, push against each other and swell up and then make them tight on the bar. Just check and make sure you can see what's going on. Yep. So just push that in. Uh, I think it is opposite. I'll just opposite so well, it's not essentially opposite but you're turning anti-clockwise to tighten them up make sure it's lined up and then again don't over tighten it you can you'll be able to sense when it's nicely snug on there which that is and there we have it bar and shifter installed so through uh, use, you just um, tighten this up finger tight and you don't want it too tight, otherwise you're resisting, putting a lot of resistance on the lever. So just, just finger tight. And sometimes if your gears in there, what will it be? In the easiest ones start to slip into the uh, hardest ones, it's probably just because that just needs nipping up because all it's doing is the cable is just pulling the cable through like that just because that's not tight enough but uh, that's all it is, a, a friction shifter they work absolutely amazingly so that's the levers and the bar end shifter on what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cable it all up with the outers now if you are unfamiliar with cable outers and uh, you don't know what the difference is between them you can see if you have a look down that cable you can see that it is a coil so that is used for brake cable and if I get another one and if you have a look down that one you can see that you hopefully can see that it's loads of strands coming up and that is what we use for gear ones um, I'm going to make sure that we have cable stops on each of the ends when I put them on the bike, the cable ends, end caps, whatever you want to call them, and just get them up um, and put in place where you want your cable runs, and um, yeah, and then we can put the inners in. So um, I'm going to turn the video off for now just because everything's running out of battery. So I'll, I'll do this and get the cable out as in. Okay, so I've got uh, my batteries uh, a little bit charged up now, so we can uh, I can show you the uh, cable runs. So I've got the brake cable just coming through here. So it, the cable just slides into these um, Tektro brake levers. I make sure there's one of these metal type uh, 
cable ends on all the ends of the cable and on the gear ones it's plastic and so we've got the cable run coming from the rear brake round there going into here and then it will be bare cable to here and then round the seat post to there and then the cable will come through here I need to remove this old cable it will come through here go feed through there through here and get fastened in there so that's the rear brake the front brake again there's a cable stop on there it's going to go around here comes around here and there's a cable stop there uh, then it will be bare cable and the same thing here I'll get remove this old cable here but then it will just run through there run through there and fasten it there and then the gear cable the gear cable is going to slide through that hole there it's going to slide through a hole let me see it at the back there sometimes you can just uh, slide it through and it'll find the hole and then it will come out here and then it's going to follow this cable around it's just popped out just put it back in place apologies about this one handed again so it's going to go through there then we're going to have bare cable bare cable bare cable underneath here it's going to go through the um, the cable guide underneath the bottom bracket come through here bare cable bare cable and then we've got the uh, derailleur here and then it's going to fasten into there um, I just need to show you how the brilliantly simple brake levers cable run all we do cable end sits in there run the cable through the hole at that back there that hopefully you can see and then it comes through there so I'm just going to do that now guys and uh, we are nearly nearly there we are nearly there and I'm sure you can agree this is looking absolutely stonking so uh, let me get the cables in what else is there to do once I've got the cables in I'll just adjust the brake pads on the um, on the rims just because I might put the front ones on the back and the back ones on the front so they might not be exactly in the right place then we'll get the chain on and then I'll show you how to um, do the gears so what I'm going to do now while I turn the video off is just do those cable runs and um, just adjust the brakes on the rims and then I'll get back to you when it comes to uh, messing around with those chains okay so now the uh, the brakes are on and they work fine so I'll just show you we just put the cable through so we just ran it through through this through this and fastened it on there and I've adjusted the uh, the pads I'll show you the rear brake it's just it's, it works just the same as the front so comes through there just like that so I just need to trim that off and put cable stop on the end so it's perfect and I'll just show you the front brake in action and that's working fine so let's have a look at the rear derailleur so a couple of things I want to talk through with you here um, I'm not going to put the chain on just let just yet uh, I haven't connected the cable up uh, just yet what I want to talk through with you are the limit screws now on these there's one there and one there and sometimes the the two screws that are right close together now those screws do not uh, control uh, your gears as in when you're flick, flicking through your gears and the gear keeps on skipping um, you go two gears at a time that has nothing to do with them two screws 
so you should never if those have been set up properly by the shop those rarely ever need adjusting again um, what they do is one screw just stops the derailleur from moving the chain so far so that it would come off and get stuck in between the frame and the and the cassette and the other screw adjusts it so no matter how much cable you try and pull through it doesn't come off this end and go into your wheel now when we were kids and your gears weren't working with your indexing stuff you'd get really annoyed and you'd get screwdrivers out and you start messing with those and we probably made it 10 million times worse all the indexing is on uh, indexed gears bikes is the cable tension and you'll notice on some bikes you have the um, screws on a mountain bike they're on the on the levers and on road bikes they are normally here but you can have them in line you'll have seen them by the um, by the handlebars you have them in line and all you do is you just turn the cable a quarter a turn at a time so if it's been in use it's probably because the cable's got too slack so you turn it a quarter turn at a time just to put a bit of tension on it and just check it go up and down the gears and that's all how indexing works it is just cable tension so if your gears start to mess up then it is just down to that now because we're using friction shifters on this we are never ever going to have the problem of of uh, gears uh, missing or skipping because they're it's just variable on the lever so we don't have to worry about that but what we definitely do need to worry about is we need to make sure that when we pull on that lever hard enough the chain will never come off into the wheel and also when it's on its slackest the derailleur doesn't come this way and come into the frame um, so that's just adjusting those two screws once those are set like I say now I did have a, a message in one of the videos from someone that says I had friction shifters when I was um, a kid and every time I don't like them because every time I would have cables stretch the chain would end up in the wheel or it would end up in the frame and he believed that was down to having friction shifters that has nothing to do with having friction shifters um, if you have indexing gears it would do the same if you pushed the lever too far um, if these two screws are set up correctly you should be able to swing on that lever in either direction and the derailleur will stay at its maximum there and its minimum here so um, it's, you know so don't think that um, because the chain is coming off or and that uh, there's something wrong with the system it's just these two screws and don't think that if your gears are skipping in the in the middle if you've got an index system that it's anything to do with those two screws if it's a problem here then it's not if you are indexing and it falls off this side then yeah you'll need to adjust a screw and if you're indexing and it comes off this side then yeah you'll need to adjust a screw because them two screws weren't set up properly originally but just don't start diving on those two screws straight away because if it is just gears skipping and missing or not going into this top one it is just down to uh, cable tension so what I'm going to do now before I put the chain on is that I can see here that the derailleur isn't this jockey wheel isn't even in line with the smallest gear here so I can adjust uh, one of the screws so that the derailleur in its resting place is in line with that smallest screw and then what I'm going to do is um, I'm, I'll put my phone down and see if I can show you this So then what I'm going to do then is I'm going to physically just with my hand and just get it somewhere near to start off with see how far I can physically push that derailleur and it would looking at it that would go too far so in this case here I need to adjust that screw because that would take the chain too far so that's what I'm going to do first of all is just adjust those two screws and, um, and then we'll be somewhere near. Uh, the other screw is what they call a B screw and what that 
it alters is just the sort of like distance your jockey wheel is from your biggest cog and what you want to do is just make sure it's about five mil um, any closer than that you're going to get your chain rubbing against it itself and if you have it any bigger all it does is it just makes the shifts not as clean so you know just about five mil something like that so that's what i'm going to do now and hopefully uh, we won't be far off because like i said i don't need to do any indexing with this because it is just friction shifting so once i've adjusted these uh, limit screws and the b screw so the derailleur is just moving nice and smooth when i pull on that lever there um, the next thing to do is just put on the chain put on the bar tape and then this is done and it's a case of admiring it and, and uh, thinking oh my god some lovely uh, close-up video work for you so yep remember i said about that seat pin i had to use the original green one because the black one that i bought had the pin that was too short Got the one by friction lever there. And uh, you may have seen in the other video, the derailleur was uh, SLX, but last night I lost um, my patience with it. And I thought, well, I've got uh, an NX, a SRAM. Let's ditch this Shimano on. Because what was happening was the Shimano, it had the cable would come this way around and there was a lot of the derailleur right back here. And when you were going up and down, there was only s such a, a small space and it was catching the back of the derailleur halfway through the cassette, which was very unusual. And I thought I've never had this issue before and everything else I've used has been SRAM. And you can see here, there's no metal part of the drill anywhere near the cassette. And I just bolted this straight on. Sorry, twisted the video. I just bolted that straight on and it worked straight away. Not a single problem with that derailleur. Um, so that's on there now. So what I'll do is I'll sit on it so you can get a, an idea for the uh, riding position. And uh, see what you think. So there, you can see that's nice and comfortable. That's not too extreme, not too aggressive. That's really a really nice riding position, that. So uh, really nice on the drops as well. That, that feels really good. You can really, could really fly when you've got some tarmac in that position. Uh, and then up here, it's nice and relaxed as well. So. It feels absolutely lovely. Feels lovely. So uh, next weekend I'll be taking this for a little test ride so you can check out that video and see how it goes. I'm really looking forward to giving this baby its first ride. Please remember this was a 1995 Marin Bobcat. Revived and looking sweet. Give you the view from the cockpit. So let's just quick run through. Tectro brakes, just use the uh, brakes that came with it. I think they're uh, Shimano Asira X. Uh, the wheels are just what came with it off eBay. Um, those are, if I can see a label anywhere, those are Araya, proper old school. Put up, we've got on there a rival crank with a 32T front. We've got an NX rear derailleur with a Sun Race uh, up to 46 cassette. Um, it was an 11 speed, but I've taken the smallest sprocket out because the, um, the hub body is a seven speed. And I presumed it was eight speed. That was my mistake, but it, it's not caused an issue, too many issues. Um, and then, yeah, the rest of the bits my brother gave me. Um, 
which is the bars and the saddle <laughs> and then we've got the drop down shifter there so next weekend this gets an outing and i think it looks absolutely amazing just that black color looks sweet okay so it's finished not bad for a 26 year old bike is it um hopefully this has inspired you to uh have a go at doing your own get them cheap as chips off ebay and then just a few parts and uh looks stunning i i loved riding that 88 uh, specialized rock opera i did that's such a comfy um, commuting bike and um, so yeah give it a go give it a go and check out my other youtube videos on stuff like this see ya